Hello guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Gav, aka Paytech. It's around 4 o'clock in the morning and uh, sunny, it's not very sunny, in misty Scotland. And uh, I've decided to get up after that bird you just heard there screaming in my ear. Uh, and come and play in the garage. As you would have seen from the title of this video, uh, we're going to be playing with a turbo quad. So this will be like part one of part, probably millions of them. So uh, yeah, we'll get to it and we'll start working on this beast here. So this part of the video, um, what I want to do is I want to address the trigger pattern and the trigger issue. What I'll do is I'll talk you through a little bit of basics about trigger patterns. So. When it comes to EFI or any ECU, the ECU needs to be able to tell exactly where the engine position is. In your usual sort of carbureted setup or CDI setup, you'll have generally a single pickup. And when that single pickup in the flywheel has passed the sensor, it'll generally fire the ignition. Because I'm changing this quad to EFI, fuel injected, with the turbo kit on it, I am going to use a Speeduino style ECU. Um, I got it from the guy, um, I think it's Dan or Daniel, um, from DIY EFI in the UK. I've been speaking to him back and forth about ideas for turbo in this quad. We've both come to the agreement to use a trigger setup called 36 minus 1. Now trigger patterns to people that are maybe new to the trigger patterns can sound daunting when it comes to timing. A lot of people don't really want to get involved with the whole physical timing part of an engine. But in actual fact when you read into it, it is quite simple. So the pickup I'm going to be using is the stock pickup on that which is a VR type sensor. Voluctor I think it is variable reluctance and uh, yeah I'm going to use that sensor the original sensor but make my own trigger wheel the idea of the trigger wheel is so the engine knows exactly what position it's at to fire the fuel and ignition at the right time I'm going to be using what's called batch fire on this um, quad here batch fire basically means every single rotation of the engine 360 degrees it'll fire a pulse of fuel you can get a thing called fuel sequential which is 720 on a four stroke engine. The idea of that is it will only squirt fuel in the injection stroke. That, to do that though I need to have a, a cam sensor basically so it can tell when it's at top dead center or when it's near top dead center for the compression stroke. But to keep things simple I'm just going to use the one sensor and uh, use it in batch fire. The ECU will also need a couple other sensors like TPS, throttle position sensor, air intake temp, coolant temp. It is quite important to have a good trigger signal because you don't want to have RPM errors. You might end up finding that it sparks at the wrong time. So basically having it 36 minus 1 gives the best sort of resolution for the bike itself. There's a couple of wee issues that we're going to come across as well with doing it to a single cylinder. As for the missing tooth itself, where you put it on the flywheel itself doesn't really matter normally but because this is a single cylinder the compression stroke is such high compression that the actual of um, the magneto itself will slow down just gradually so you want to make sure that the missing tooth is past that just to make sure the ECU picks up that it's slowed down very slightly while in the compression stroke. And there's a couple of other things we'll go through but uh, just now what we're going to do is we're going to pull off this cover, we're going to get a puller, we're going to pull off this uh, magneto slash flywheel, whatever you like to call it, and uh, we're going to get in the bench and talk you through the trigger setup I'm going to do. Oh yes, and a quick reminder, if you guys like this video or dislike this video, smash one of them buttons and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more of this content. It's just one of them things that just helps out the channel get more views and shows other people that you don't have to be a degree graduate uni student to do this sort of stuff. I'm DIY, granted I am an electrician, but not an auto electric or uh, a mechanic for that matter. Right, so here we are. Look at the mess of wiring. The reason for this is because I've tried similar setups and tried to make things work. As you can see here, this is like a pit bike coil, just because this uses a single pickup. However, these are fixed timing at 38 degrees. And 38 degrees when you've got a turbo, yeah, just not ideal. So I was using that for trigger and I was going to use a DET3 it's called from EMU, this here. But to be honest with you, I was having issues with it and trying to get things all up and running with it was a bit of a pain, especially with the single trick up uh, pickup because 
the resolution of the pickup wasn't great and it didn't really like the VR sensor or picking anything up so we'll go from there and uh, we'll use just a full blown standalone for this that means we can get launch control the lot set up and here we've got the I suppose you call it throttle body now it's not so much a carb you got the TPS off the side of it and up the top here we can see that's an injector and that's off a Honda CRF 250 I think it was or a 450 yeah, um, one thing we might have to end up doing though is put a big tank in here called a boost capacitor and the reason for that is because every time this pulses the intake stroke is going to be closed so you're going to have pulses basically against a dead head which is not the best for boost so if you have a big tank in here it kind of makes it like a capacitor that smooths out the boost um, into it like an intake manifold as such. Anyway, enough of me talking, uh, gonna wrap off this cover and get a look at this flight. So as you can see here we have the magneto which is uh, inside the case, a part of its case itself. And in here we have the pickup. So, this here is the flywheel single pickup here. Uh, this did have two pickups but one's been ground off to try and make it a single pickup. Um, right in there and basically if I can get this thing to zoom in. That pickup when it passes this point here it lets the CDI unit know that's at top dead center and that's when it fires its ignition. So what we need to do is we'll probably keep this and might have to um, elongate these bolts a bit to get the sensor further away and uh, what I want to do is uh, I'm going to basically weld on and back gun makes things easy now we just need to get the puller on this and the threads on this puller if you want to make your own is M38 by 1.25 I just bought one because uh, I've done a lot of fucking about over the years. It wasn't cheap though, so I think it was £30. Pounds. Right, so uh, underneath this uh, flywheel there will be a Woodruff key somewhere. Uh, make sure you don't lose it because uh, yeah, that's what keeps your engine in time. So. There we go. And there's that Woodruff key. Well, I'm talking about just right there. Right guys, so it's on the bench now and yeah, looks like it's going to be relatively simple to do. What I've got here is some uh, steel and uh, my plans are is basically cut this down here and cut loads of little strips, loads of strips. I uh, worked it out around about, in fact, let's do some maths. What we'll do here is uh, we'll me measure the radius of the flywheel, times that by 3.14 and uh, yeah, basically, what we'll do is we'll be able to work out the circumference. When we've got the circumference, we've got 360 degrees of a wheel. And what we're going to want to do, 36 points. Now we're 36 minus 1, which is uh, obviously 35 points. So uh, to get the 36 evenly spaced out is every 10 degrees. Every 10 degrees, uh, you're going to want a strip. I'm not the best at maths, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work it all out, see if it looks about right, and then I'll show you guys the maths I've done to get the answer. Right guys, <laughs> so here we go. This, the radius of that is 119 exactly millimetres. We have to do, uh, times that by 3.14, which is pi, which gets a full circumference, uh, which is 373.66. Now, I've divided that by two because obviously half of the flywheel is going to be covered in teeth, the other half is not going to be covered in teeth. So, 186.83 millimeters is going to be half of the circumference. If you can imagine all the teeth are bundled up together as one solid block, half of that is 186.83. So 186.83 divided by 36 teeth, we're just going to pretend it's getting 36 teeth and we're just going to minus 1, which will give us the gap. And that equals 5.189 millimetres. So 5.189 millimetres is going to be the width of every single tooth. And uh, that will give us 36 teeth through in there and we'll just obviously take one away. That 
looks about right to me. Um, I'm gonna have to make them up. Oh, but that's that's, a tip. that's not the bit of metal. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna have to make it out of strips of this. Um, I'll try and get them to 5.189 exactly. Um, it's gonna take a lot of time to cut all this out, but you know we'll see what we get on. And to be honest, I'll probably clean this up and use like a hot glue gun, and uh, that way I can temporarily put it all together to make sure that um, this calculation is going to be accurate. Right, so because I don't trust my own uh, theory, <laughs> what I've done is I've put a wee bit of uh, masking tape around there and I'm going to measure out 5.18 and I'm going to mark it with a sharpie and just mark where the teeth are. Right, so I've done it again. I try to be a little bit more accurate this time so the spacings are a lot more uh, equal. And uh, yeah, I've managed to get it closer but still no cigar. Um, what I done was I measured the radius again as well in the circumference to make sure I wasn't off of that. That's all bang on. Um, I actually think because I was near enough going five mil in between every single one and the thickness of the pen itself, I'm gonna have to cut these. I probably cut down here with the angle grinder and then chop these off. They're gonna have to be pretty much bang on. Yeah, and I don't have any engineer's blue left, so uh, we're going to use the wee one's uh, Crayola crane. Works an absolute dream. There we have it. So uh, I'll get the angle grinder and I'll cut down this line. So there we have it, two strips. There is a part of me as well, what I'm considering is uh, tacking this onto the flywheel and bending it around so it actually gets a nice curvature as well. The other part of me is like, nah, just leave it. Um, tap it down as much as you can, tack it, and then take the lathe to it to make it run. Yeah, in fact, this is Rev 1, so what I'll do is I've got the bar there clamped on, I'll get the blowtorch to it, heat this up and uh, bend around so it's the same circumference. So there we have it. That wee mark there. This one. So I'm going to cut that with a hacksaw and uh, yeah, see how fiddly this is going to be. And with some time in the file, 5.18. That's exactly what we're after. Tiny little thing. And there we go. One of 36. That's going to take me fucking ages. There we have it, all my chunks. So that was a good uh, few hours actually. It took me about three hours to do all that. Get them all absolutely perfect. Get a nice edge on them and stuff like that. What I've done now is I've gotten some duct tape and I've put it on backwards so the sticky side's out. And I'm just going to lay out the teeth just to see uh, how it's all going to look. <laughs> Yo guys, how's it going? It's probably been weeks actually since, uh, it's about two weeks actually since I filmed this uh, flywheel malarkey. But we've got the power supply for the lathe now. It's just connected it up just today and uh, I thought it would get right involved with uh, putting this. So basically I've, I've already skipped ahead. I've put a little step in it as you can see there. The idea of the step is when I get my um, teeth I can push them all uh, butt up against the step and when they're butt up against the step they're all going to be in line. I've got the glue gun here I'm going to heat it up uh, I'm going to give these a clean down and this a clean down with some brake cleaner and then um, I'm going to stick them on uh, with glue and that's just the sanity check you know it's just just for another sanity check. So the hot glue gun and the spacer didn't really work so uh, what I've done now is uh, as you can see there I blew it up I marked out the degree wheel here, 10 degree intervals. Um, I put the flywheel in here and then I marked down the exact degrees. So we've got 360, obviously 36 tooth, and then minus one. So um, I just need to make sure when I put these tabs on now that um, they're bang on the middle like that and uh, tack them in place. Right, guys, just crack it on here. Um, got a wee bit of X as well on the side but because I've got the lathe up running I'm going to skim that down so yeah once I've tacked the other side I'll tack the other side and uh, make sure it's all square and uh, we'll go over the lathe and make sure it's nice and true but it's looking good I'm pretty happy so far there we have it missing tooth 
and 36, sorry it's 35 other teeth and we're missing. So I'll tack on the other side now, we'll spin it up in the lathe and uh, we'll neaten it up. Hey guys, here she is. As you can see, it's going to be a nice and tight fitting, and the points is going to be bang on. So um, it's probably going to take, like by the looks of that, I've got a good mill away from the sensor, but to be honest, it's going to take a bit of trial and error to get it um, absolutely bang on. Um, what I can do is elongate these holes slightly, um, and that will let me uh, take it further or closer. So there we have it guys, just got the... <coughs> outside cap off there and I'm turning it over and I'm feeling absolute no signs of teeth scraping anything so which is a good thing uh, obviously so uh, and I've adjusted this piece down here so it's nice and close like I say that's going to be it for this video because I was just want to film the flywheel part itself the next part is probably going to be start the wiring I've got myself a little scope up there, a wee oscilloscope, because I want to see what the trigger pattern is going to look like. Um, this is going to be, it's a VR sensor which gives a spiky wave. Um, and I need a digital square wave. So there is a conditioner in the ECU itself that converts the sine wave to a square wave. Uh, and that's how it converts it into an RPM. So yeah, it's looking good guys. And um, I'm going to stick it all back together again. And yeah. I'm buzzing to see this thing going. Be good to see as soon as I see an RPM signal, that's when that's when I know it's gonna work good. Right guys, thanks for watching. I know it's been a little bit long-winded, but I've never done this before, and uh, you might not have either. And uh, if you're watching it to learn, you've probably seen my videos further down the line if it works or not. Right guys, you take care and uh, we'll catch you in the next vid. Cheers.